How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new here, do me a huge favor and go down and subscribe before we get started into today's video. It's been a while since I've made a Bronco video and when I first took delivery of the Bronco, I made a couple of videos on it and I didn't want to overkill it with content on one vehicle, but I think it's about time that I kind of give you guys a couple of things that I've started to dislike about the Bronco and the small amount of ownership that I've had. It's just a, around a thousand miles, probably a little bit under a thousand miles at this point in time. Soon enough, there'll be a video of five things that I love about the Bronco, but we're gonna do five things I hate about the Bronco in today's video. These aren't in any particular order, but the last thing is going to be the thing that bothers me the most about it. I think with all that being said, let's get a cold start up. I mean, you can't tell me that it doesn't look just awesome. Let's talk about the first thing. And the first thing is going to be the fuel economy. Uh, this thing is an EcoBoost motor, and I understand it's a Bronco that's on 35 inch tires, and it's a one and a half inch lifted, and it's not made to be the most like efficient vehicle in the world, but this thing gets like 17 miles to the gallon. If you drive this thing really, really nicely, you can get 19, but you have to be extremely, extremely nice to it realistically the best you're getting is like 17 to 18 miles to the gallon and I get the whole thing that it's an off-road rugged SUV that's that's not really supposed to make sense at all and the Bronco is a newer product and it was developed in this time when gas is expensive people are trying to go EV people are trying to go hybrid you know you want to get a little bit more out of your gas mileage than 17 miles to the gallon let's see what I'm getting right now at this point I'm getting 17 at this point in time which isn't too bad if you look at it the jeeps get way worse fuel economy my friends who have 35 inch uh tires on their jeeps get about 14 and 15 something like that i just really wish ford went just a little bit more but i'm out of gas so let's go fill this thing up i went ahead and only put 20 dollars, which gives me about seven gallons which is a little under half so the second thing just has to be Ford and how they've handled the situation and how they continue to not really care about the customer orders because the demand is so high that they don't really care about the people who are actually wanting them. They're continuing to pump out new models like we got the Everglades, we got the Bronco Raptors, but the thing is people have been waiting so long for you know normal outer banks like this one or like Badlands or whatever they've been waiting for and Ford continuously goes and releases these new models. Now, Bronco Raptors are only supposed to be delivered to customers who had first edition orders, but that's not really the case because I see dealerships who have estimated wait times who don't have first edition orders. There weren't that many first edition orders and they've been giving them to people who have status in the company or people who are affiliated with the company in some way or marketing in some way or something like that when the average consumer is kind of just getting um, the backhand and they're not getting the actual vehicles that they've been waiting for for over a year. I think what Ford should be doing is continuously making the Bronco better, you know, improving everything that they can, getting the delays taken care of instead of continuously releasing new models. I think the Bronco Raptor would have been perfect if they released it, you know, a year later, which would be around this time, or if they released it next year, there would still be hype around it. There would still be, um, you know, everything kind of around it and people would want to buy it. I think people would still want to buy it, but the thing is, you can't even get those vehicles if you wanted to get them. You know, you see reviews on the Bronco Raptor, but you can't get a Bronco Raptor. They give them to the media, they give them to the press, but what are you gonna do with that information? Wait two years and hope you get yours? I mean, even when the Bronco came out, you were waiting, you know, seven, eight months, and uh, if you did order it a little bit later for a 22 model year, you waited 15 to 18 months like I did if you have a little bit of a higher equipped package. You know, some people waited four, five months, six months because they have base models, but for the most majority of people, they don't want to buy base models. They want a couple options on their car, and for those options, you're going to have to wait. And then that brings me to point number three is uh, my missing options. So in order to make my Bronco come faster, I deleted some options. I deleted the upgraded metal bumper, which I can go after market with, but certain things like the Sasquatch package, which in my opinion makes the Bronco, is on a back order. Hard tops are on back orders. And the reason for that is because Ford had to switch manufacturers. I feel like they should have already had the hard tops and soft tops nailed down. That's one of the biggest things with these Broncos and the Sasquatch package along with that, I feel like that's something Ford should have had, you know, prepared and ready 
before they launched the thing. But I guess they didn't. They had issues with COVID and whatnot. I understand that, but I still feel like they could have done a lot better. And then I also am missing my uh, tow hitch. I don't have a tow hitch on my car because that's another thing that was on a severe back order. I was not sacrificing my hardtop and I was not sacrificing my Sasquatch package, which is the reason that I waited so long for my thing. But I think it was worth the wait for the options that I just couldn't live without. The bumper will get a aftermarket uh, at some point, but it's annoying that I couldn't get it how I wanted to, even though I waited 15, 18 months for this thing to come. Now, before we get into point number four and five, here are a couple honorable mentions of things that just kind of bother me and I wish Ford would change and do differently. So one of those things is the accessory ready. It says accessory ready literally everywhere on the Bronco. It says it up there somewhere, right on the windshield there. It says it here. It says it in the real tailgate. It says it everywhere. I don't think that's necessary. I mean, like, I get that they want the vehicles modded. I'm going to mod the Bronco, but I feel like you don't need to have it say accessory ready everywhere. The next thing is the step, right? The step is so high, like there, there is like half a step in between this. I understand they wanna make the lowest point of the vehicle as high as they possibly can make it in order to clear stuff off road, which makes sense. But if you're a little bit shorter, it makes it awkward. Not my problem, but a problem when I do see people getting into the Broncos. And along with that, these handles, instead of being here, are here. So, I mean, it's cool that like you can sit in it and kind of hold it from here, but I don't know, it, it just it's a small thing that you get used to, but it bothered me at first. Another honorable mention, I hate how new cars have to do this. Now, this last one isn't too big of a deal, but it's the hard top and how it comes off. I don't, I don't know. I feel like it's something that's gonna break after a little bit. You can see here, these are the bolts to take the uh, back piece of the hard top off. You know, they're solid, they're bolts, it makes sense to have these. The top doesn't leak or anything, but these latches here, basically the way to put the top on is to clip this in and then turn these latches. These latches, it doesn't seem like the most secure way to you know, go about this. This is a little piece of plastic here. You're rubbing plastic on plastic, and I feel over time, it's something that would uh, not hold up the best way. Something Mazda learned uh, over time in the first generation Miata like I have, it doesn't have hooks like this that clip in. It has little sleeves, springs that kind of clip onto something and over time they wear out, you have to replace them, they're pretty pricey. So Mazda, you know, they innovated. BMW had a system where the hook went in the hole and it would clip in. This is something I feel like would wear out over time. Now, I'm pretty sure Jeeps have these as well. Jeep owners let me know how they have held up, but it just seems like cheap plastic that in four to five years time is gonna be scuffed up if I do take the roof off a decent amount, which is one of the appeals of why I bought this vehicle in the first place. I don't know, it just seems like Ford could have done it better. It's also a little finicky to get on and off the hard top, uh, which another reason why is because of these little things. It's, it's You don't want to rub it against it, but in order to make it come down and press down and fit right, you have to kind of make it rub, and I don't like that. Uh, I feel like Ford could have done a little bit better with the quality on that. And the last and final thing is how much noise this thing makes when you're rolling. Now, I've driven Jeeps before. There's a lot of reasons why I like this over the Jeeps, but one of the biggest things I have to complain about is how much noise this uh, hardtop makes. Now, I will say this, it's not as bad as people make it out to be. It's not like this thing is unbearable at you know, normal cruising speeds. If you're going under 40, it doesn't make any noise. If you start going highway speeds, it gets a little bit loud in the cabin. Now, it's not unlivable, like I said before. I don't think a 2022 Bronco that's worth $60,000 should be making that noise. That's something I have to complain about. And potentially, um, it does, like when I put my hand here, the sound becomes a hundred times better. So maybe I have to look into a way to make it better. But Ford needs to do better with that. There's a little too much road noise. Now I'm on 35s once again. It's going to make noise. Um, it's going to be noisy, but it's the, the leaking of the noise coming into the cabin is what I'm complaining about. In the 23s and the 24s, I'm sure they're going to continue to advance on them. I'm sure they're going to continue to make them better. Some of the reasons why you shouldn't buy the first model year is because uh, the first model year is a test year. The second model year, it gets better. As far as recalls go, the reason why I didn't bring up any of that, it's a new vehicle. It's going to have some issues, and the media makes it a lot worse than what it is. 
The Bronco has some issues. Ford's working on them. I'm sure they're going to get better, but we have to hold them accountable for that. So Ford, do better with your soft tops, your motors, your everything. That's all I have for this video, though. If you did enjoy, please do me a huge favor and subscribe, leave a like, and I will see you guys in the next video.